Hello, today we're going to be talking about follow filming, the do's and the don'ts, and how to do it as safe as possible. Obviously, if you have a car following behind someone down a hill, it's going to be dangerous. You need to make sure that you take every safety precaution that you can. So, I have my camera set here on the car. You want to use as wide a focal length as you can. I have a 10 millimeter lens so that you have as much of the scenery in frame. It also makes it look faster. You want to get the camera as low as it can because then you get more of the motion blur on the sides. And you also want to make sure you stabilize your camera. Some cameras have in-body stabilization and some lenses do also. You want to make sure that either you have lens stabilization or body stabilization but you don't want to have both on because it'll interfere and then you get jitters. So my body doesn't have image stabilization and only the lens does. And so I also have a rod mounted through the top to make sure that the camera's not going to go anywhere. This helps reduce the wobbles and also helps you go with the flow. So I have two large suction cup mounts, which I can link below in addition to this mount. This I used to use for a DLSR camera to film. And I had this suction cup attached to this one. This rod and this rod are both separate. So if you're gonna follow film someone, you gotta make sure that your car is in good working order. You gotta check your brakes. You gotta make sure that you're able to stop. You wanna make sure that you have good tread on your tire. You don't wanna be following someone down a hill 50 miles an hour with bald tires. It's a terrible idea. Always make sure that you know the rider, know how they skate. Don't film people that you don't know. It's not safe. And if you can, just use a GoPro on your head. It looks cooler. This is very dangerous. It's not really worth it unless you're making formatted media for different companies or something like that. The best footage that you can have is the camera that you have in your pocket. The phone is a great tool and phone cameras nowadays are amazing. We're filming this on a phone with a, just an Osmo gimbal. And honestly, that's a great way to do it. You get some corner shots, you use the gimbal and it all looks fine so if you're driving the car you want to if you have a sport mode you want to put that in the sport mode or put it in the lowest gear you can because you want the transmission to be taking some of the motion of the car but you got to do i right, have a good run buddy always tell the homies you love them all right so when i follow the film you got to make sure that you test it before you get too into it this road is ridiculously steep and if you can you want to have someone in the car with you that can watch down the road and alert you of cars we have two spotters and the road is closed right now don't film open roads if you can help it all right see if he's waving it on throwing a fat penny right here Do not want to lock up on the brakes. I'm tapping my foot. You do not want the car to be sliding. You want it to be tap. You want to tap the brakes. And even if the road is closed, you need to drive as a follow filmer, as someone that the road is open because you do not want a car in a skater sandwich. That's a bad thing because someone might be pulling out of their driveway to go up, you don't know what's gonna happen. And when you're driving a ton of metal down the road, or two tons, you do not wanna be hitting skaters. See, I was ready, I was able to stop, slam on the brakes, not slam, I feathered them so that I didn't hit the board. And he's okay, we're okay, it's all good. We're gonna finish her out strong. You gotta always be ready. You need to be in a calm headspace and everything. You just have complete trust in your abilities. You gotta make sure that everything is in working order. And cheer the homies on. James is one of my favorite skaters to film. He's just like, his style is ridiculous. All right, here we go. Final corner, we got R. Let's go, baby. That's why you have spotters. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. We're top to bottom safely. 
So now I'm going to talk you through how to find and pick out components for your follow rig setup. Your follow rig is going to greatly depend on the weight of your camera, whether you have a DLSR or a cinema camera or a phone, that will greatly influence how big your setup is. For most builds, this three prong suction cup mount right here is perfect and is all you need. I use this with a phone gimbal, I use this with a DLSR, and it works great. This is the camera mount that I recommend to anyone who asks me what camera mount should I buy. For most people, you're using a DLSR, and this is more than capable. The great thing about this is all of these points are movable. You can move this first arm and position these suction cups, and so you're able to put it on the front of the car in a lot of different positions and move it around. You want to mount the camera as low to the ground as you can, but I find that attaching the camera to the fender results in more motion shake because the fender is not a well-stabilized piece of the car. I created this wish list where I'm pretty sure you're able to look it up if you just click this. I will try and put a link down in the description below that you can click on. These will be most likely overkill for your setup unless you're running a large camera that's over five pounds. So I would highly recommend using this mount when you're starting out. The next step up, I would recommend stabilizing the camera from the top. Most cameras have hot shoe mounts that you could get one of these, but basically you attach it to your hot shoe mount and then you have either a female or a male attachment point for one of these 20 inch rods and then you can get one suction cup, one extension arm, one grip head, and essentially have one of these mounting points. I have two on my setup, again, because of how heavy it is, but then you're able to stabilize the camera from the bottom and from the top. Essentially, the rule of thumb with lenses is the wider the lens is, the faster it looks. I use a 10 millimeter lens and because my sensor is a super 35 sensor, not full frame, it essentially is like a 15 or 18 millimeter lens. When I was looking for lenses, it took me a while to find one that I liked because a lot of lenses don't have image stabilization. I was able to find this lens and this is the lens that I have currently. It is an EFS lens, so this will not fit on a full frame sensor. It will not fit you're going to need something that does. And so this has image stabilization on it, which is super, super helpful and is why I'm able to have smooth footage in my follow film. So I put it all the way to 10. It's not the greatest lens in the world, but it gets the job done. If your body does have image stabilization, I would recommend this Rokinon 10 millimeter f 2.8. I'm pretty sure this is what Alex Amin used and it's a great cheap lens which with decent glass that is relatively inexpensive. It doesn't have image stabilization but it does fit EF mount lenses which is a great option if you already have image stabilization in your body. Thankfully if you run Sony cameras that's the same case. You can also get a Rokinon in the Sony E mount you also can do it in Fujifilm or Micro Four Thirds. With the Micro Four Thirds, you're going to have a crop factor, and so it will not actually be 10 millimeters because the Micro Four Thirds sensor size is different and much smaller than a Super 35 or full frame camera. And so as a result, you're going to get a much more cropped in looking image. This is by no means the only way to build a follow film rig. There's lots of ways out there you can use bike racks and make certain things and lots of other ways to do it. This has been the most efficient and inexpensive way for me to do it personally. That will vary person to person based on what cameras they have. This is a great starting off point and if you have any questions feel free to comment them below and I'll do my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. Just remember to stay safe. The rider's life is quite literally in your hands and it is very important to understand the responsibility that you have when you decide to follow the phone. But have fun, skate safe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.